There's a big hype train going on with CJ Stroud. We're kind of in the, the honeymoon phase uh, of evaluating CJ Stroud. And there's nothing really to judge on the field. Uh, all we have to judge is what he's saying, uh, what he's what he's saying at the podium, et cetera. And the more that you hear CJ Stroud, and, and the character has never really been questioned, but the more that you hear CJ Stroud speak, the more, if you're a CJ Stroud fan or you were, you you probably find yourself rooting even more for him. And if you were hesitant and maybe thought that there was a different solution to the quarterback position, uh, you find yourself wanting to be wrong and you find yourself wanting to uh, root for him. And I think one of the biggest questions uh, about players that come from big programs and get drafted high in the draft is how are they going to handle losing? Uh, how are you going to handle the adversity that comes with losing? How is that going to be done? How is that going to be handled? And the more you hear CJ Stroud talk and the more you go back and listen uh, to what he says, the more impressed you get by the overall intangibles. Look, the odds are against any quarterback that gets drafted in the first round. That's the reality of the situation. Whether you're number one overall, whether you're number two overall, uh, whether you're late in the first round, the odds are against you. It's a hard position to play. It's a hard thing to do. Uh, just the, the the physical demand is high. The mental demand, uh, some, some would say, is even higher. But when you hear C.J. Stroud, specifically how he handled uh, the biggest heartbreak of his college career, it's beyond impressive. Uh, as someone who labels himself the podium critic, I, I found myself extremely impressed uh, with the way that C.J. Stroud handles uh, adversity and defeat. And I want to go back to the Georgia game. And I, I, I did this as kind of a case study just to see how Will Anderson, who didn't lose many games, and how C.J. Stroud would handle defeat or they handled defeat and will anderson lost to georgia in the national championship cj stroud lost to georgia in the college football playoff and what cj did at that podium man it's something that is rare it is something that people that you would think would be prepared for that situation would not be able to do what he did uh, especially at his age but what he did was beyond impressive. And let me just set the table a little bit before we hear it. So C.J. Stroud had just lost the game uh, to Georgia, and they ended up losing on a, on a field goal, a missed field goal by Ohio State. And in this situation, Ryan Day, instead of trying to get closer to kick the field goal or maybe even try to score, he basically got conservative. And C.J. Stroud, who had a sprint and, and a run, to set them up for the field goal. Uh, they ended up coming up short, and Ryan Day's at the podium. He's handling himself fine. But Ryan Day's at the podium. He's being grilled by the media. And if you follow a big college program, you know as soon as you lose a game, uh, everybody sucks, everybody needs to be fired. And, and quite frankly, Ryan Day may have deserved some criticism in that moment because maybe he could have gotten a little bit closer. But as Ryan Day is answering the question, listen to what C.J. Stroud does. He basically grabs the mic from his coach and represents the program, uh, represents his teammates, uh, and represents uh, really the face of the Ohio State program after, minutes after, still the grass stains on the jersey and everything, uh, minutes after his biggest disappointment uh, in a rare loss. You know, game plans are only good by the guys who can put it on the field. Yeah, um, I'll be his um, his guy. Um so CJ goes up there. He just grabbed the mic from Ryan Day, and, and this is what CJ had to say after the loss. It's a great game plan. I mean, without the right plays, you can't make plays. So, I mean, uh, we all have jobs, and Coach Day did a hell of a job. Coach Wilson did a hell of a job. Coach Key did a hell of a job. Coach Dennis, Coach Fitch, um, Coach Alfred, um, Coach Fry, so many moving pieces. And even the defensive coaches did a hell of a job. I mean, Coach Hart, yeah. really everybody. So, like, we really were – dialed in on what we were going to do. I feel like we did that. And Coach Day called a hell of a game. Our our game plan was superb. Uh, we have so many, like we said, we have 1,500 reps. So it was like when we were out there, it's kind of like you knew it was kind of going to happen. And um, when you're playing like that, I mean, you're playing free. That was one of the most fun games I've ever been played in my life. That probably was the fun game, most fun game I've ever played in my life. And it just sucks that it has to come down like that. But, I mean, God's plan is is is, is, is something that you don't really understand in the moment. It's something that you, you really won't understand maybe ever, but he thinks greater than us. He knows we're greater than us, and he does greater than us. So, I mean, that was his plan for that to happen, and they fought too. A hell of a team, great team. Uh, Coach Smart, 
did a hell of a job. But I, I think we should have won the game, of course. I definitely think we should have won the game. So just got to lick our wounds and keep going. But Coach Day did a hell of a job, man. His leadership and even though people would talk and talk and do this and do that, and he just keeps showing up. And when you see a man like that, that's a true man, man in the arena. We, we owned up our mistakes and we just kept I mean, kept swinging like our culture is. And I mean, I wouldn't want to play with anybody else because they <laughs> hell of a coach. Man, that's beyond impressive um, to do that. And, and I remember going to Texas OU games growing up and my dad would never let me leave early. And, and the guy that provided me with the most heartbreak uh, was Chris Sims. And one of the most notorious moments of that era of Texas OU games was when Chris Sims went up to the podium, uh, he was beside himself. He couldn't, I mean, he was, he was handling it. Okay. But it was rough to the point where Mac Brown had to grab the mic from Chris Sims and defend him. Keep in mind, this is a guy who grew up with an NFL dad. CJ Stroud uh, has, has been through a lot. He's been open about his father being incarcerated uh, and his mom having to wear both hats. And he had the wherewithal and the maturity in that situation to be able to go up there and face that music. And he played good. Chris Sims played bad in Texas OU games. CJ Stroud had the had the wherewithal to go to grab the mic from his coach in that situation. As a podium critic, that's an A plus right there. Who knows what happens as far as what happens on the field, but that's some impressive stuff from a young man in that situation to, to be able to do that. You don't see that. Hell, when I pulled up the Will Anderson press conference with Bryce Young after they lost to Georgia. They both handled themselves well. But at the end, Nick Saban felt the need to grab both of those guys and say, just so you guys know, and this, I think this was their sophomore years, this one game doesn't define these kids. And you can tell the kids are beside themselves and they're thankful for their coach having to do that. But Nick Saban had to do that for them. Mac Brown had to step in front of Chris Sims. Understandable. Don't know how I would handle that. Don't know how you would handle that. But if you're not used to losing, there's a chance that you might not handle it well. Hell, Kyler Murray wouldn't shake uh, shake some hands at times in college after he lost games. And C.J. Stroud grabs the mic from his coach. Damn. It's really impressive. Uh, that is some really impressive stuff. Uh, and it gets a lot of Texans fans fired up. Uh, and that's really all we have to judge right now until – uh, mini camps come, but that's some impressive stuff from CJ Stroud to be able to do that and see how he handles defeat.